All right, guys. So we're going to start a video off here. It's basically going to be walking you through the process of actually playing the game and stuff you guys should be watching out for, especially if you're new and making sure you just know a few things. So let's start off with we're going to get a hunter here that you may recognize from the melee video. So let's go ahead. Most of you guys will, you know, most weapons are something you choose of and something you want to actually play with and what you find fun. There's really nothing that's not, really, there's nothing that's really not meta. You know, everything can be used for a full well extent, especially with one-shot headshots being as potent as they are. There's a lot of guns you can use. So going with something that you, you might get when you're first starting off here, let's start off with, you know what? Nothing screams better than the, the Springfield. Uh, but do we want to get... Yeah, we'll do the Springfield here. Not going to do any ammo types, because you guys might not have that unlocked. It'll actually go as if it's just an actual first starting round. Uh, we'll just do this. So on every single match, you do want to take something that can be used. Uh, I'm going to start with the knuckle knife. That is pretty much the easiest one to start off with. You know, it, it lets you use anything. But, you know, you know what? Actually, for you guys, we'll start off with just using a knife. Same thing you might start off with here. Med kit, of course. Always want to have a med kit. And then... Well, you may not have it unlocked already, but choke bombs are definitely a must if you're playing with other players. So for consumables, we're just going to start off with some of the basic consumables. Uh, almost always you want to take either a regeneration shot or a vitality shot. Let's take a weak one. Then we'll take a firebomb to ignite people. We'll take a dynamite bundle. Nothing too crazy here. I guess that'll probably be the best bet we have here. Let's go take a second dynamite bundle. We're not going to use anything else. Well, this is just your standard basic basic starting point here. Uh, we do have Quartermaster on this and Serpent, but we're not going to use Quartermaster for anything. I'm just going to act like this is a good old-fashioned starting game. So, we'll do a solo run. Uh, yeah, we'll do a solo run on our own against teams of twos. Believe it or not, sometimes I find it easier to play against teams of threes. Teams of twos can be very chaotic comparatively to teams of threes, just because there's a lot more people every run on the map. There's four spawn points when it comes to teams of threes. There can be up to six spawn points when it comes to teams of twos. Well, actually, it can technically be more if you get a few solos out there. Oh. Let's start. It's on here next to Alan, Alan's and Sons and Fishers. Oh, well, take note where the extraction points are at. Well, just keep it in the back of your head for right now. Always try to keep an eye out for any other people that are in the area. So if you ever notice, my audio should be a lot quieter. Audio should be a lot quieter than the sound gameplay, and that is on purpose because sound is super important in this game. Uh, I don't think there's anyone here, but we keep going. Alright, so you're going to see me walking to here without a care in the world. Granted, I am pretty sure I there's no one else here, but it's always best to always keep an eye out just to make sure you don't get shot. Just being a little careless in this game, gameplay clip. Alright, you're going to see me here aiming at the bounty clue. Uh, usually, you know, I'm just keeping an eye over there just in case there is another team. They'd go straight over there. They might not even care about certain other noises they're hearing in the area. They just want to go straight over there to get the clue.
Now I'm pretty sure I just heard some birds go off in the corner. They want to come here. Clues aiming downwards. All right. So the constant me aiming around and looking. It is just going to be basically, you know, important for you to keep in mind that at any point someone can just attack you. And you want to make sure, you know, you're always at the ready and you're always being able to, you know, know your surroundings. Even if I don't see anyone there, I can just assume, okay, this is a good angle. This is where I want to hide from. This is where I want to hide into, you know, run over here if I do get attacked at any moment. So although I hear, I know there's a clue to my left. I'm kind of curious where those gunshots are coming from. So we're gonna head over to the gunshots over uh over getting the clue. I know objectives are quite important, but I can almost guarantee the clue's gonna be down in this area down. Alright, go ahead and notice the map up top, you're gonna see that it kinda crossed out, grayed out everything at the very top and left all the sides open and the bottom open. So it's a large indication that more than likely the boss is gonna be at one of the bottom four compounds instead of at the top or in the middle. Here just because of uh, how the map is shaping up to be. Yeah, running the open, not the best idea, but... Always keep an eye on your surroundings as much as you can. Alright, so you're going to see coming up over here, I'm about to get shot. Just uh, pay attention to my movement. Oh, well, there goes someone. Crossbow, did you shot at me? and it helps out. Alright, so I told you to pay attention to movement. So just to do an overview of what ended up happening there. The moment I saw a crossbow shot come at me, I started jumping around and being erratic. Uh, you don't want to keep yourself an easy shot. I didn't know there was a second guy there or not. Now at that point, as soon as he missed his first shot, he lost his element of surprise on me. Uh, that allows me to basically go into cover, hide. I looked for him for a little bit, but I will tell you right now, a lot of the time, it's not worth it trying to fight one of these 1v1 fights. Don't let your ego kick in, just leave. The guy has a crossbow, the farther you get away from him, the less effective he's going to be. Yeah, if he lands a shot on you, it might do some damage, it might get quite annoying, but at, at least at that point, you know, you're gone, you're out of there, you have time to heal up, leave, and you can expect him to come far farther from it, you're gonna see me coming up here. I'm gonna hide in a bush real quick and just see if he pushes up. That's probably the smartest play to do. So what I'm hoping here for is he gets a little greedy and pushes up to us. So that's a Devon. Alright, so as I said earlier, just judging by the map, it was a Devon. Um, most of it's just me waiting for him to try showing up by, see if I can get a good shot on him. The guy never moved, so I'll actually tell you right now, I never saw him for the rest of the match. And this match was kind of underwhelming, but there was nothing there. I just sat here, hidden, 
He never showed back up. Granted, sometimes it's not the best to hide in here. It leaves you as an open shot in case he does see you before you see him. But I, I don't think he was going to be looking particularly in these group of trees. Probably in the houses, but not the trees. We're going to keep going. Wasting our time here is not going to do much. We can't land the shots anyway, so we're kind of in a safe spot. The horses here aren't going off, so it means it's pretty far away from me. Not close enough to let off the horses. It's always important to move left and right. If you can, if you get a little better at it, you can move left, right, forward in like a circle pattern, but throw off the circle. Don't always keep going in a circle. If you're doing right down, don't do right down, left, left up. Do right down, left down. There. Not worth it for us to deal with him right now. So we gotta keep going. A lot of sound traps in the area. general direction over there. There's going to be a lot of people heading over here pretty soon. Let's see if we can get a quick, quick eye on someone over here. Also fighting over there. building right here. They see me. Just fine. We take one shot and we want to move over a little bit. A lot of angles from us to shoot them at. There's also a lot of angles for us to get shot at. Take a quick look in this direction over here. Get this thing in here real quick. There's someone right over there, I can see him. Alright, so we're gonna try to get. I know there's more teams here than probably just about two to three teams around here. That window's wide open. So normally, just keeping your head peeked out is not the best of ideas, but I don't think anyone knows I'm actually here. Maybe the team inside the barn can deduce it, but I don't think there's any other team around us that knows we're here. I okay, just saw one guy right there. Team 
left. I was too busy mucking about. We don't really want to leave the front door anymore because they will see us. Depending on here to the side gate, it's probably going to be the better bet. A lot more cover. around it. So let's talk about what I did there real quick. So I did get surrounded by a few people. Um, Primarily the main thing I did once I got took damage, I started retreating back into the woods. There's hard cover there, which will prevent them from hitting me. But it is important for you to note that I did throw that that uh, dynamite bundle there. It wasn't meant to actually kill anyone. It was more meant to prevent them from pushing. Just hearing the sound of the tss makes people want to stop pushing up because they don't know how long it's going to go off. They don't know how long it's been cooked or, you know, what the time the time is on it. Even then, even with a dynamo bundle, it does have some pretty good range to it. So if he tried pushing by the time he got over the the, the bundle, he probably still would have took some damage from it or died. So just remember, you don't always have to throw your grenades, as I'll call it, because it could be a frag bomb, a dynamite bundle, dynamite, whatever. You don't have to throw it for a kill. You can throw it to help you uh, retreat and stay safe. Get a chance, reload. <sighs> yeah, I feel like body shots, body shot central here. <sighs> Go ahead, burn it. Get out of here. Guys, last time he has necromancy.
probably wasted his ammo here. That was just a way to, uh, in case he gets back up again, he can't just shoot me in the back. Honestly, there is no one around us, just these two people. Like honestly, they're just camping inside that building. It's not really much of a point for me to go take this. I'm just gonna go ahead out and extract. There's not really much of a point for me to push it and try to get anything. I'm a solo bounty player. So pretty much, that was probably one of the smarter things I could have done. Could I have kept fighting on and trying to kill the other two just for, you know ego points i could have it just really didn't make much sense if i wanted to keep on fighting i could have but if i died i died i didn't have necromancy to revive myself uh the guy i took down he did have necromancy i don't know if he had any bars left but he also didn't have any ammo so there's not really much he could have done to stop me now as like i said it's that's pretty much it how it ended they didn't go for a final push on me. They didn't do anything crazy. They just kind of uh, accepted I got away with too fast because they're busy fighting other people. So basically, here I am getting to the extraction. Now, with the extraction, there is a few things to mention here. You can tell when someone's getting close to it because the double horses will start making a bunch of noise and acting up. So I kind of knew it was in the clear because there is obviously no noises being made, but I still stayed on my toes. You never know when these guys are a crack shot with a motion sniper and they hit you from, you know, half a mile away. Now, you know, just moving around back and forth like this, probably could have loop, did a little bit better movement, but that's pretty much the end of that story. I just kind of backed out and called it a day. Alright, so just to do an overview of what ended up happening there. So, primarily we went in, probably one of the weaker guns in the game. I mean, there's definitely a lot better options in the Springfield, especially with no ammo to it. One of the main things you love about the Springfield is the fact that it does have dumb dumb ammo, and it is very fun to use. Now, that being said, one of the things we learned in that game, although we, we didn't do that much on a killing spree, but... The game's not necessarily always about trying to kill everyone on the map. It's about extracting the bounty. That's your main goal. Granted, having fun is another part of that, so if you find it fun to just kill everyone in the match or die trying, go right ahead. That's up to you. Uh, wasteful pushes is kind of the main thing that a lot of people get wrong in this game. And I'm not saying camp, but if you see two people camping in a building, just because you want them to die doesn't mean you have to sit there the whole time and try to either wait for them to come out or push in there and die for nothing. You know... You will fight them eventually again in the game. And although on my end, I, I was a solo bounty, so I didn't have to wait for the other one to come, you know, to extract. I just kind of took one and left. It's about normal. Now, another thing we saw there, someone shot me with a crossbow. We could have put eyes on him. We couldn't see him. Uh, we heard the crossbow fly past us. He whiffed his first shot, which on the crossbow is kind of your main thing, your first shot. Now, we pushed up a little bit away from him. And... We waited for him to try walking across, doing what he's going to do, see if we heard some noise. He chose not to. He chose to stay there hiding, rat maneuver, but this game is kind of just based on survival. Uh, now, the next thing I do want to mention, headshots are very important, yes, but don't disqualify a body shot. If you're doing a quick flick and you want to land a shot, land a body shot, even if it's not the headshot. Yes, they might tap you in the head and kill you. But odds are, especially if it's like a little bit of a surprise and, you know, they're not expecting it, hitting them with two, with a body shot either means they have to take a regeneration ra uh, shot, a, a vitality shot, or use two medkits on most primary weapons. Now, it's not going to be, it's not a fun game all the time where you got to, you know, you're fighting 30 different people at all times. It's just not the case. You're not going to always do that. It's a lot of searching around and being by yourself. But hearing the environment and hearing what you hear 
and going, okay, I heard birds. Let me look up in the sky. Okay, it's coming from, you know, west side. We know there's a team over there. Now, that's pretty much just about it. That's just a beginner's view of how this works. And just let me know how it goes. Let me know how you guys' games are and see if you guys want anything specifically to talk about.